Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Everything We Love About Disney, the Disney podcast with the description in the name because it's where we talk about everything we love about Disney. With me, as always, is... Oh, sorry, I'm your host, Tommy T. It's been a minute <laughs> since we did an episode. And with me, as always, is my wife and co-host, Gina. Thank you for being here. Hey, everyone. Glad to be back. So, I thought that a fun topic for this show would be, since we're all waiting here for the parks to reopen, we could talk about some of the things, uh, some of the cues around Walt Disney World that we love that uh, make waiting for an attraction not so bad. So we thought we would run through each of our top five favorite cues in Walt Disney World. Are you ready, Gina? I think so. With your... Go ahead. So what's fun about this is that we both decided to, on our own, put together our lists. And I actually had to write mine down because uh, the more I thought about it, the the more I had to write down and I had to really um, organize myself. So uh, neither of us know what the other is going to say. So uh, we might be improvising a little bit on the spot in case uh, we both end up with the same um, attraction queue. So yeah, so we're gonna do our top fives. I think what we'll do is like we'll start with you. You can do your number five if that's okay. And then like let's say that your number five is on my list, then I'll reveal that at that point, and then we'll talk about that one, and then we'll go with my number five, and so on. Okay. And so forth. Um, yeah. So do you want to kick us off with your number five? Sure. So I went by park, um, just because that was the easiest way to organize. Um, so I think to start, uh, do you care which park I start with? No. So I I ranked mine in order one through five. So whatever, okay. Got it. whatever order you want to do, whatever. Yeah. Honestly, I was just gonna say that my I think my number one is clear, and numbers two through five could I kept changing them around. They really could go in any order. So like, don't even worry about it. I <laughs> okay. think I have a clear number one, but all the others. Uh, or whatever. So whatever one you want to start with is totally fine. Okay, so I'm going to go and start with Epcot and say my top, my number five is um, the Finding Nemo. Um, I, I don't even know what the official attraction it's name, name is. It's, the Seas with Nemo and Friends. Yeah, that's the one. Just because when that, fir- well, first of all, it used to be the Living Seas and it, it was completely different. They... Um, modernized it a lot they added the finding nemo franchise and they added this attraction and i just love that you start you know on the on the crest of a beach uh with this with the grass and then you move your way through each of the rooms all of a sudden you find yourself underwater and there's a giant boat above you on the ceiling so you really do feel like you have gone underwater and you have joined your um, little fish friends for a fun little attraction. Yeah, honestly, and this one didn't quite make my list. It was in my honorable mentions. Um, I almost get a little disappointed how low the lines, how low the weight usually is for yeah. this attraction because I'm like, oh, I could spend a few more minutes in, in some of these rooms to really take it all in because, yeah, you have, like, the beach at first, which and then you said tra- uh, transitions you to the underwater and, like, you're always rushing through that transition, right? And I would, I would appreciate to spend five minutes, yeah, kind of slowly working through. it. Whoever I'm with, I'm always like kind of dragging my feet. I'm like at the last in line, cause I'm like, oh, I want to look at all this stuff. So I just remember the first time going through it, being absolutely blown away. I mean, there's the beach patrol chair. Yep. Uh, there's the sounds of the beach, the waves. It's just, it's really impressive. Yeah, it's a great transition into, into the rest of the attraction. Yeah, love it. All right. So my number five, and like I said, I jumbled this around a lot of times. This could be easily number two in any given day, but I put Pirates of the Caribbean Mm. as my number five. Was this on your? Did this make your list? Um, it was an honorable mention. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of like the same same deal where I did Seas as an honorable mention, but um, yeah, I mean Pirates kind of the same way. Really sets sets the scene. You walk into the. Castillo del Moro, I wrote down, is the name of the fort there. That's the, you know, you're supposed to be in this Caribbean fort. And just seeing the armory of the weapons and the dungeon and um, just uh, the sort of smell and and feeling of the stone really, like, brings you to a new place. And it's like feeling the walls. Like, I can just picture, like, walking down there and just, like, touching things. And it's very, like, tactile in that queue. The, the, um, it's funny because today we wouldn't... 
<laughs> we're all trying to not touch things. Um, it's I very much find myself like touching the iron of the uh, the gun racks and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I wrote down one other note here. Oh, another a couple other things I wrote down. One being, it's a very uh, linear cue. It doesn't switch back on yeah. itself. So it, I mean, I, to me, that makes it feel like faster and more of a journey instead yeah. of like <laughs> repeating. That's a good point. And also, the similar to the seas, and a lot of the attractions probably we'll talk about, um, it getting darker as you go yeah. helps you transition your eyes to the rest of the ride. Yeah. You're coming out of the Florida blazing sun. <laughs> And if you went right to the ride, you wouldn't be able to see for the first couple minutes. Yeah, that's a good Because, like, point. think about when somebody, like, takes a flash photo, right, where your eyes are blinded. That's what it's like. Um, Which is frowned upon, by the way. Of course, no flash Please photos Please don't do that pirates. in Pirates. I really hate when people do that yes. in your boat. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then all the way to the boarding area there where you have the, the sort of sounds of the ocean and the... Um, I don't know, just that, that last overpass you go to if you don't have fast pass, right? As you go over the track to get to the other side. Or that's if you do have fast pass. Either way, um, just the transition onto the water itself is just a really immersive experience. And let's not forget the music. Oh, of course. Yeah, that sets the, the tone as well. Like the, the kind of uh, creepy little pirate's music there. I love that. So fun fact, uh, when we got married in Walt Disney World, which we will do a podcast someday all about. Yep. Um, we decided to do a bridal portrait session at the Magic Kingdom because... Because you have to. We have to, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we ch- you can choose one of three loops, and one of them was uh, f- ended up at the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. And, of course, we got our picture taken outside, and it was beautiful. Um, but our photographer also led us inside to the the queue a little bit so yeah uh, we have very happy memories now of being the only ones in there taking pictures by the barrels yeah and all of at that. sunrise well yeah so inside being like yeah sitting on the barrels and stuff was fun then being outside at sunrise was really beautiful and unique uh and yep yeah, that was just a really cool yeah. experience so we'll never on. forget that yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, right, I guess four. number four for me, I'm jumping to um, Animal Kingdom, and I would say that It's Tough to Be a Bug is Ooh. my top four, and that is because I love the Tree of Life. I think it's magnificent. Um, it's the one park icon that I always turn around and say goodbye to, more so than the others for whatever reason. It was just something that I picked up um, as a kid, I think maybe because it was generally uh the park that we would only go to once in a trip so i would always turn around and say goodbye to it anyway i love that you make your way closer to the tree of life you're surrounded by the lush greenery the oasis and things start getting closer and larger than life and all of a sudden these animals are just jumping out from the tree and the fact that you go underneath it mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're inside the tree and you're honoring uh the bug population that <laughs> seldom goes unnoticed um i just love that 3d show um i think it may, some people may not they may find it cheesy or scary or whatever but i have very happy memories of going i love it and i just think that it's such a magnificent space yeah it's one of the only ways you can get really up close and personal with those incredible carvings yeah. on the tree and then like you were saying that kind of optical illusion right when you first enter that the discovery island area the tree seems not regular size but it seems like a tree like a giant tree like not that you could go inside of it though it doesn't look like mm-hmm. it's possible and then as you're like oh we're like underneath the tree underground and it feels like you're underground as you're in that uh, the last kind of waiting area really cool all right very nice i had that under my shout out slash Honorable mentions, it was closed. Like, that was definitely on my mind as yep. I went through. Yep. Um, so my number four is actually, I would guess... No, it's not. I was going to say it's the newest queue, but it's technically not. It is one of the newer ones, though, and it is Rise of the Resistance. Yep. Um, and I would say, if, if you haven't been on this attraction, uh, fast forward, like, three to five minutes, because <laughs> I'm going to spoil stuff about it. And I think that's what one of the things that makes the attraction so cool is the sort of different phases you go through before you get to the actual attraction itself. You start by going into the rebel base with all the rock work and the waterfall, and then you're in this like mine shaft that really looks like it was just kind of just blown out on the cheap almost, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you see the wires and these haphazard lights put up like it really was this 
this rebellion just got here and we had to set up this base as fast as possible and then you're seeing their equipment and the blasters and the um i don't even know what it's called i should know uh as a star wars nerd but that board you know like that from the movies with like the planning the plotting board there um, just all of that was really cool, and then as you enter the second phase of the ride, I guess, there's like a secondary queue, which is, of course, the, the, um, Star Destroyer deck and everything, um, being in there is like a complete 180, so you have like a double queue, really, yeah. is what makes it so cool, is then you have the second queue experience with the intimidating, uh, cast members, like, yelling at you and putting <laughs> you in your place, and then, you know, everything is white and pristine and perfect and, and imperial. And so, like, the dichotomy of those two experiences is really unique. Like, there's no other attraction I know of like that. And then the last thing I want to say is um, another one of the coolest things about this ride is that even, or this queue, I should say, is even some of the queues that we'll talk about that are immersive and great, you're still, like, waiting and there's still that moment when like you're watching other people get on the ride and you're just like okay like i just want like pirates you know you're there that last stretch and you're like this is really cool but i just see all these people getting on the ride and like when are we going to be on the ride and in rise of resistance you're in that jail cell you experience the last bit of the pre-show and then you're on the ride yeah like you don't have a chance to like wait really like after that so it really like surprises you on how it takes away a lot of that like the annoying part of the of the queue mm-hmm. so um, yeah, any thoughts on Rise of the Resistance Cube? <laughs> Did I cover it? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I honestly, it was such a blur for me because I was just trying to soak it all in, but in doing that, I I feel like I need to go back on and, and see it a second time yeah. to just really appreciate the details. But the anticipation, I think, and the buildup to those early rooms, I forget a lot because, <laughs> one, I'm pretty new to Star Wars anyway, but two, like, I just didn't know what to expect, so yeah. I didn't know what to focus on. Um, but... I think that was a great I, description. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think next time we go, maybe we'll do an episode just about all of Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. And then you'll after we've been like on that ride a second time and stuff, we'll be able to go into more of the details. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Great. So we're at number three. Please? Yep. So number three for those who um, held off on Rise of the Resistance, we are now <laughs> done with that section, so we are on to number three. And my third is Space Mountain. I thought this would be on your list. I I love Space Mountain. Um, Childhood favorite. I love going from the outside to immediately going into that room with the ball pit, for whatever those are, Um, (laughs) soundproof or what, the giant um, screen, and then moving right into those tunnels, that music. I was going to say, I was waiting for you to say music. The music is... Very nostalgic for me. It is beautiful. It's exciting. It reminds me of just running up those, um, those, uh, the ramps. Yeah, the ramps, I guess. Um, going past the planets and the stars that move with you. And make me a little dizzy. Yeah, (laughs) they do. (laughs) But just kind of the build up to what's to come and, um, you know, it was really fun. Anytime you have a fast pass, you could just blow past the, but it's so the general long. ride. It's, it's so long that, like, I it's almost fun. I love going through the fast pass for that because, yeah. like, I don't know. You still have to, like, walk a decent amount, right. but, I, but I enjoy it. It is very impressive how long the walk is because yeah. you're truly going up into this, uh, into Space Mountain, into yeah. the structure. And mm-hmm. to leave, it's the same thing. So it's just a very impressive Considering its age, um, and you're like under the ride too, right? right? Like right. the ride must be right above you, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's just magnificent. Mm-hmm. I love everything about it. Now, let me get your opinion on this. Do you were you upset or happy when they closed up the last part of the queue? Do you know what I'm talking about? I miss the uh, moving walkway. No, no, sorry. Is that what like you mean? the the very like after you the fast pass and regular merge, yeah, and you go into the two sides, yeah. You used to be able to look up and see the roller coaster, like the ride. Oh. And now there's a ceiling there. Oh, I don't mind that. Yeah, I kind of miss the hearing the screams and seeing, like, the occasional you catch a glimpse of a car streaking by and the, uh, like, the, um, like the disco ball basically yeah, yeah. effect. Uh, well, I like I that you can, you can still get that in the TTA. That's true. That's true. Um, so that's kind of fun. I love how dark it gets in there. You yeah. Really... Well, it makes. It did make the ride itself darker. Yeah. Um, so I guess that that's a benefit. Nice. Okay, my number three is 
Sticking at the studios, it is the Twilight Zone Tower of oh Terror. Oh my gosh! Is this on your list? This was my number one. Yeah, I figured this would have to be on your list, <laughs> but, uh, but I can improvise. I'll start it off. I mean, it's it. This could easily be my number two or my. Honestly, it was. I talked th- thought about it for being my number one. Um, I think this kind of set the standard for the modern like Disney queue of what you know you could do with theming. Um, just walking into that lobby and everything being covered in dust and literally feeling like everybody just up and left one day like yeah, decades ago yeah. it's really cool uh all of the nods to the twilight zone show which like you can look up there's like probably a few dozen of them like the but a few of the big ones like the broken pair of glasses or the the stopwatch um there's some books in the library in the pre-show area that are referencing the shows so that really like made sure to weave that in and just the, the spooky hotel feeling you get like it really is like stepping into a horror movie or a thriller movie like and then after the pre-show you're in the boiler room and the uh, it's so dark and the sounds of like the steam or whatever it is like the boiler yeah it it even has a, a, a scent yeah yeah and you know even though there is that kind of last bit of anticipation there they wind you in a way where you're not just like in a line, you know, just like waiting your turn. Like there's a lot of like sharp turns there. So like you're always kind of like looking in a new direction in the boiler room. So I, I really like the way they do that, that it's not, I never mind waiting there for however long they need me to wait there. Right. So, um, you know, what did you have about Tower of Terror? Did you have any other notes? Well, again, the, for me, it's all about the music. Um, having that chilling 1940s music happening in the lobby, thinking about, everything being covered in that thick dust uh knowing the attention that the that the imagineers put into making it truly look like it was abandoned um and even right down to when you're exiting the ride first of all the attraction is just top to bottom incredible detail incredible theming probably the best theming i would say of any attraction and yeah i'm not putting that lightly i love this ride i love thrills even when you're exiting the ride, you end up in this like basementy bellhop right. area. You end up in the gardens. Like you are just in this hotel. Yeah, I probably should have actually started. I kind of jumped into the lobby because that's the most to me impressive part. But starting off in the in the garden area when the line's a little longer and kind of looking up at the tower itself and getting a closer view of the architecture and the detail. And then, you know, which is also where you exit, of course, in the lower right, garden, the porches, which is cool. Right, the porches, it's just... The stone. Yeah. Um, but, like, the fact that everything's dead, though. Like, yeah, it's right. It's not a tenant garden, so it really sets the tone right away of, like, oh, is this place even really open? And that's... It's all just exactly as it should be. Right. Yeah. So, uh, on to number two. Yep, you're number two. I'm, I'm pivoting a little bit okay. because um, we have had some overlap, which okay. we were expecting. <laughs> Um, my second favorite is Expedition Everest. This was also my second favorite. (laughs) (laughs) So you start this one off. Okay, so right when you get into that part of Asia in Animal Kingdom, you already feel like you're in the Himalayas. And not that I've ever been there, but the shredded prayer flags and Gupta's gear... (laughs) And uh, the van thing that's selling ice cream, I'm pretty sure. Yep. The, the sweeping views of the uh, mountain and hearing people screaming from several hundred feet away. Like, you just know you're walking into something special. Mm-hmm. And then right when you get into that queue, depending on whether or not you're getting into the general queue, the fast pass, or even the single rider, which I highly recommend for those who want to ride, but maybe have some nervous um, members of their family or, or party. you just want to ride a bunch of or, times in right. a row or whatever. Like, <laughs> Great wanna, option, yeah. but you really not miss, well, I shouldn't say that. There's always something to look at no matter which line you're in. And it really does set the tone for this story, this narrative that the Imagineers came up with, which is you are getting the gear that you need in order to make this expedition. You're seeing all of this like museum of artifacts and this older um, couple, this Tibetan couple who own all of these things and you see the pots and pans hanging and the sleeping bags and then all of a sudden you start to realize there's some lore there's some folklore about this 
uh, Yeti. And um, everyone's trying to get evidence. Um, you know, did they did they truly see this thing? Is it real? Is it a real footprint? What are the origins of this creature? And you set off on this adventure to um, maybe seek out the Yeti and be. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that that's a great over. Uh, you covered most of what I was going <laughs> to. I'll just add in. I mean, yeah, that last bit of the Yeti Museum I really love because, like you said, I, I wrote down just the word lore because that's what it is. But I love that there's not just like a definitive. Oh, here's what this one person found, and we're going to go see what it is. You know, like you really feel like you're a part of this bigger narrative. You're like, okay, some people saw this, some people believe this. It could be this tall. It could be this tall. Right. And like you've got these conflicting or like different sort of takes and stories and artifacts and you're not sure what you're going to encounter. And then the other thing that I wrote down uh, that you didn't mention um, yet was all those like not all, but a lot of those things were just things that they bought that Imagineers went to the Himalayas and like whatever sort of flea market or trading post or whatever they found they just bought crap <laughs> and put it up on the walls and it all that's why it feels so authentic because it is it's incredible and even i should have mentioned uh, just the nature within these man-made you know there's sculptures of the yeti there's mm -hmm. there's offerings um to the the local deities like it it very yes. much feels like a a belief or not a belief you have like the locals who are really like believing in it almost as a religion. Then yeah. you have like the scientist angle of it, or like the explorer angle to it. Yeah, there's like actually there's three, right? There's the right. locals who are like believe it as like this real thing, right? This mythological thing, and then you have the sort of scientists who are like, eh, it's just a whatever, an evolution of something, or the missing link. And then you have the explorers that are like, it's a monster, and I'm gonna go catch it, basically. Yeah, right. So choose choose your yeah. uh, choose your path. But I just love it. And in the midst of all of that, there's, of course, the music, um, the local music. Um, but there's also, like, a serenity just before you ride. Like, all of the rooms that you go into, there's, a, there's like, a sense of calm. Yeah. Um, with the lush greenery of Animal Kingdom and just, like, these little alcoves of open air. And right. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah. One last thing I forgot I wanted to mention before was I love the office with like the old computer. Yeah. With, like the nineties <laughs> computer. It really like feels like you're like, oh man, we're in this like really janky tour company. Right. Um like you were, you mentioned the tour company before. Like the the I should have wrote down the names, but the husband and wife team that yeah. runs the um uh, what is the name of the company? It's it's just actually I think it's just Everest Expeditions or something. Something right? like that. Whatever it is. Um I should have wrote it down, but yeah, it's just great storytelling throughout. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was my number two. So that we're throwing it back over to you. Do you have? Yeah. So my number one. In... There's one. Yeah, there's one you haven't mentioned yet, right? My, num yeah. my number one in rethinking all of this <laughs> is once again Animal Kingdom Flight of Passage. Which is also my number one. <laughs> <laughs> we did this very well. Yes. Yes. Well, this is perfect. I think we can kind of agree that those. Those three are probably the best, right? The yeah, I mean, Animal Kingdom. Of all the parks, each of them have a unique flavor and narrative, but there's something about the storytelling in Animal Kingdom that is just unique and special and really imaginative. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there are so many Imagineers that, that work hard on this and have really taken things to the next level, but I mean, we have to mention the, <laughs> the guy who really leads the way. He's... The, the torchlight, you know, that leads them is Joe Rohde, I think, which yep. just set the standard. We talked about him before. He's I've talked the best. About um, but, you know, he's done such a good job of inspiring everybody to, to ascend to that next level. You know, I think he did a bunch on, on Galaxy's Edge, but not, he wasn't the lead on that. So I think you see his influence. Yeah. That he's kind of like created the new standard. So, um, but yeah, I mean, where do you even start with, with Flight of Passage? I guess the uh, word that comes to mind the most is immersive. Yeah. Um, even even listening to Joe Rody talk about Pandora and his uh, thought process on how to create this world. I mean, a lot of it didn't exist. Like they're basing this entire section of the park on one film, so they really had to. And and they didn't put it in the world of the uh, sorry they didn't place put it in the time of the film right it's thirty years later right so it's, like, so it's okay. even beyond it's surpassing the film yeah let's tell this the story of what happens after and like 
far beyond the sort of limitations of that one film. And, you know, the, the, I would say the queue tells more of a story than the attraction itself. The attraction yes. is the is an experience, right. unlike any other. But the story really comes from uh, similar to Rise of the Resistance, where you're going through different phases of this structure, and it tells the story of what happened here and and who's kind of had their hands on this thing. Which again, it's got three different groups of people that had their um, hands on this. Those being the the native Navi the RDA, like the military type people, and then the scientists that have come in since to sort of repurpose it as a, um, a scientific venture uh, and more you know positive one for the environment around you. So you're seeing those three things kind of all at play. Um, so I mean, that's, let, let's talk about those three different things. I think like what's that, that first section being in front of the valley or like underneath the rocks. I mean, you're going underneath that structure is really incredible. Yeah, you're going through the, the floating rocks, the Valley of Moara. Um, it's really like the the nature side the of greenery, things. Greenery, like... Um, and just that lush earth. Um, and as you make your way through that structure, you find that you're more in like a, a cave-like setting. Yep. And you're seeing... Um, beadwork and um, yarn and um, what would you even call it? Like it's almost like, like basketry, yeah, but it's like, not like what's the word for that? I don't know, but it's these like weaving, yeah, yeah, um, and then even hand prints, drawings, and, cave yeah, drawings. like cave drawings, uh, pictorials of yep. their culture, yep, which is very cool. So you're including you're, um, the banshee, you know, kind of lore. You're, you're yeah, starting to set up there, exactly. Uh, and then you go into these laboratories. If the queue is in its longer state, you know, I think we, we try to use fast pass or go early in the morning when we can, where we're not going through all of that as much. But the the lab then has all the has the giant screen with all the different sort of research they're doing, and it has the um, the computers and the experiments going on and the. Um, yeah, they have these, like, like right down to the pipettes, these, these organ- and right, the right. trays, and the, the little um, uh, beakers and yeah, stuff right. like on things. And then the big Specimens. attraction of that, I'll let you take over for for uh, a certain gentleman we'll meet. Oh, Hank in the tank. Hank in the tank. He's he's formerly known as. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, some of the cast members gave him that nickname, right? Yeah, and um, it's yeah. a little it's a little disturbing i have to admit but it is if you've ever seen the movie that is very much what they do they have the avatar yeah floating in the incubator basically um and to me like yes it is expertly um created crafted but i think we've seen plenty of that in disney and elsewhere like great sculpting work what gets me about this guy is when he'll just twitch like at random yeah. and like just move in a really natural way like it's freaky yeah it's it's yeah <laughs> you're like oh wait is that alive for a second like you really it really gets yeah you. it's very unsettling but it's also very impressive yes, yes. magnificent mm-hmm. in a, in an odd way yeah i mean this life size like eight foot <laughs> body right. that's floating right all the while you're thinking to yourself this is huge yeah it's a big building. <laughs> it's a big building. It's a huge queue. It's it's a wonder why these things are hours long and they can actually fit everybody. Yeah. At least, I don't know. At least co- most of them. A couple hours worth of people. But... <laughs> you do end up outside, of course, yeah. most of the time. Oh, but... Especially early in the morning, right? You know, yeah. The first, first half of the day, they kind of just start trying to catch up. Right. So once you're finally through that room, you're getting close. Yes. Now you're... You transition into this military bunker, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it is ugly and cement. it is dreary. Yeah, it is cement. It is fluorescent. I mean, that's the things that I wrote down were the, the change in lighting there. Yeah. From this, you know, pleasant ish laboratory. You know, it's not it's not, you know it's, it's not pretty, but it's it's nice enough. It's and, earthly. It's the only earthly Yeah. You know, normal looking space, I guess, normal to us. Right, right. It more approximates our, you know, yeah. work conditions. And then it is this bright, ugly, fluorescent looking and it's not actual do you know this? That it's not actual fluorescent lights. Yeah. It's like LEDs that they tuned basically to look like the color of fluorescent, which is which really is cool. Which is very impressive. Um but yeah, you see the it's now, here's where it's sort of like Rise of the Resistance early on, where you see, like, the pipes along the wall and yeah. stuff like that. And 
I mean, here's the thing. It's perfectly done. It is miserable standing there for very long when you're waiting to get into your room. Yeah. Um, but I think that kind of plays into the, the theme of it. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is they, they there's a sound. There's like a humming sound yeah. that they pipe in that's really, you know, adds to the, um, the environment and environmental storytelling of the thing and just really feels like you're in a com you know this complex right right this working area facility yeah. I mean, that's the word i was really looking for yeah where stuff's going on yeah and even once you deboard after your incredible experience you're still finding your way out of that space yeah you're back into that space so back yeah. into the bunker yep Moving your way out, end up outside once again. Great way for them to save money, or it's like, oh, we're just going to build a concrete staircase. Yeah. So you can go <laughs> up and down. But again, music, sound, smell, all of it plays into your senses and makes it a truly unforgettable cue yeah. and attraction. Yeah, I think those are like the things that when a, when a cue can stimulate your multiple senses yeah. when it goes to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, well, that great. was great. So, those are our top five. <laughs> I want to run through a few that just missed my list. Honorable mentions. Yes, yeah, so you had mentioned a couple of mine, which were The Seas and Space Mountain. Um, also on my list were Big Thunder Mountain. Yep. Um, I feel like we these days use Fast Pass or Go Early in the Morning for that one as well, so we're not in that line as much. But <laughs> We have a family. St- I, I would disagree just because we have a family story where we went on one particular very busy evening and we just ended up in what we called the heartbreak rooms <laughs> because we were in we were waiting in line in these rooms that we didn't even know existed and even though you have a view of the attraction for most of the time because it's kind of an indoor outdoor space there really isn't that much to look at because it's just a wooden structure but that might have been before they redid it they redid it the queue about five six years ago maybe a little more yeah and they added in a lot of like little things. They added some of those interactive elements where oh, you can like do yeah. this dynamite and like little storytelling things throughout. So that's what makes it a little better these days. <laughs> yeah. It's not just standing I guess there. so. <laughs> so. So that's on my list. Um, I, I thought this one might make your list, but the Muppets has such a fun cue with that. Um, yeah, that is great. With the uh, that corridor with the doors. Um, you know, a stress or is it an anxiety testing room or something like that? Caution contents are under extreme pressure. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like all the Muppet gags and then yeah, in the true. in the last room there, the net full of jello and the stuff like that. Yeah, those I are love. cute. Um I got a couple more, but you take a couple of your honorable mentions. I would say uh, Little Mermaid and Magic Kingdom. Yep. Similar to Nemo in that you're truly um, moving into this like half land, half sea little mermaid very cool mm-hmm. uh splash mountain i love okay um i know it's very similar to big thunder mountain but you have the view of the train you're moving your way um into once again this like indoor outdoor space and you're yeah. like getting to you're getting acquainted with some of the characters as you move in that's true that's true um let's see what else did i say peter pan i had that as peter a, pan really changed in the last However many years so since around the, the same reefer. time, yeah, yeah, that whole a- new immersive area with the um, with the bedroom of the children and all of that is just really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what else did I say? Oh, Frozen. <sighs> Frozen is really nicely done, but those switchbacks are painful to me. Yeah, we, you're in we the haven't same... spent much time in them to be honest, because we're usually I, oh, you know, what? I did it without you. I did it without you a couple times though, and painful. It's, you just feel like you're not moving even though you are yeah because you're in the same vicinity I mean, that's the thing that i was saying about pirates is that you're never in the same spot you're always moving forward and mo- a lot of these you are that's at, true. Le- at least for like big stretches of it frozen not at all you are constantly like right next to the blo- loading area right and so it's it's awful uh, but the beautiful it's beautiful like the ceiling and the walls are all really nice um i've got an interesting one for you huh. uh, because it's gone but i want Wanted to put in the old test track cue. Oh, I loved that. It was a favorite of mine. I love the music, even though it's kind of annoying. <laughs> so much but, more than the new one. Uh, it but it looks just... like, yeah, again, the sounds and the everything, the moving stuff. Very kinetic. Yep. Um, similarly, Smuggler's Run also has a great one. That was, You know what? That was on my list, too. Um, yeah. But because you 
described Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. It, it's, I wouldn't say similar, but obviously the theming is similar. Yeah. That was an equally impressive the first time we went through it. It was just a massive building and a lot right. to look at, and that was very cool. And doing a similar thing of putting you in the chess room um, until you're like basically ready to get on the, the thing. You're not like waiting for your chance to get on yeah. in like a line. You're just kind of like get to hang out, get to take a picture at the chessboard um, and stuff like that. So that's really cool and well done. Um, to run through just a few more that I think are great. Um, I'm going to put Star Tours also. I love the uh, C-3PO and, and mm. uh, R2-D2. No, you don't like it? <laughs> I just They're don't cute. like it. Star Tours for everyone listening makes me like green. So oh, you can appreciate. I just have bad. Queue. I just have bad associations with Star Tours <laughs> and any of those like virtual rooms that move. I, I feel you. Um, yeah, just a couple more to round things out. Haunted Mansion. Uh, yeah. Love the redo of that with the interactive elements, yeah. and then you know, it just uh, is fun to be weaving through there. And I'm going to leave with one... Um, oh, I actually mentioned Seven Dwarfs Mine Train as well. I know a lot of people love that one. Um, again, the interactive kind of uh, revolution went through that as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to leave with one um, sort of interesting one that people might not think about or might not experience that often because it is a bit of a commitment, but the American Adventure... Oh, yeah. Rotunda, where you can watch the Voices of Liberty. That is an incredibly beautiful room, building, structure, all of it. Is just really expertly done. Yeah. And I love being there. And then I love going up the escalator under the flags. They have all the different like yep. flags from uh, American history. Um, so, yeah, really enjoyed that as well. Yeah, very patriotic. Yes. Makes you swell with pride to be an American. Yep. It's just beautiful. Yeah. All right. Any closing thoughts or, or uh, cues that you wanted to shout out or anything? Are you good? I think that was it. That All of those were impressive. I'm sure there were... <laughs> many more that we could have gone through but those happen to be the highlights for us yeah absolutely i mean i'd say most of the new ones they put in now are just so well done and they make waiting not so bad right at least some <laughs> at least some of the time uh at least it gives us something to talk about and think about and it really sets the scene or sets the stage for the rest of the attraction or yeah becomes part of the attraction itself so right. i always appreciate that all right well uh Gina, why don't you tell people where they can find and follow you while they're not listening to the show? Sure. So I have a blog, uh, willrunfordisney.com. You can also find me on Instagram at willrunfordisneyblog and Twitter. And, of course, you can follow the Diz Quiz on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for the fun Disney trivia videos we do. I know we're a little bit stalled on some of the YouTube content right now, just things being what they are. Uh, it's, it's been a tough with personal and uh, global situations <laughs> to do as much. But um, we want to keep doing this podcast for sure and maybe some other fun stuff coming down later in the year. So if you are enjoying this podcast and the other stuff, then, you know, subscribing and liking and stuff. I say it every episode, but I say it because it does help um, boost those numbers and just uh, kind of playing the game of of making it, um, you know, spreading the show to a bigger audience. And that really means a lot. And I really love hearing from you and seeing your interaction and everything on the shows. So we hope you'll Come and join us again for our next one. But until then, I've been Tommy T. And I'm Gina. And we will see you real soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.